Yes, hello. My name is Anders. I'm a sailor and uh, I have been doing a lot of sailing. Uh, among the things I've been doing is sailing solo non-stop around the world. I was at sea for 223 days. I've been sailing in all kinds of different waters before that. Through the Northeast Passage in, in Arctica, sailed in Antarctica in different expeditions. and uh, I started sailing when I was a kid and and um, I found my work uh, on ships. I'm from Sweden. Yes, uh, I was born in Sweden and I lived my first years in Sweden and then I went to sea when I was 18 years old. And since then I have been more or less at sea uh, most of the times uh, actually. Uh, on different kinds of ships and sailboats. Uh, I grew up with it. My father was a sailor, and he taught us uh, kids to sail when we were when we were not so so very old. So it's uh, something that I have been brought up to and into uh, from the beginning. My first longer passage was uh, across the North Sea, 1983-84, and uh, then I started to my first circumnavigation, 1987. And I sailed around the world uh, during three years, mostly single-handed on my my previous yacht, uh, Kami, as a vagabond 30, 30 feet uh, yacht. So and that was a traditional route uh, from from Sweden down to to England, down to Canary Islands, and across Atlantic through the Panama Canal, South Pacific, and north of Australia, South Africa, and up to the Caribbean again. And, Yes, I, I started to work uh, at sea uh, in the 70s and, and um, uh, that, that became my, my main profession during my grown-up life actually as a seaman and then I went into navigation school and I started to be a sea captain and, and uh, that's my real trade. So I'll be working on many kinds of ships, uh, cargo ships and tugs and... and uh, passenger ships and uh, expedition ships. Actually the idea is something that I've been thinking about all my life uh, ever since it uh, was done the first time 1968 and uh, I always wanted to do this, uh, try to do this because it's not so easy. Uh, it's a long way to sail non-stop around the world without without uh, without stopping and without uh, you know getting any help from, from shore. So, so this is an, an old dream of mine to do this and uh, 19, uh, 2018 it was the time for me to do it. So then I purchased a few years before I purchased this boat Malala. She was empty inside and then I, I uh, spent uh, a year uh, building an interior that would work uh, well for me being at sea. And then uh, finally we, we took off from, from Sweden and, and uh, did the trip. And it went well. Of course, I was I was planning to be at sea for almost a year, so I had a lot of food, uh, and it's a combination between freeze-dried food and 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 uh, uh, tins and cans and and um, basic foods like pasta and rice and and um, potatoes and onions. But uh, but all the vegetables they run out after a while, and also the eggs. So in the end, it was mostly dry food left. Not very tasty, but uh, possible to live on. <laughs> so, so, so food wasn't really a problem. There was a lot of logistic to 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 bring the right amount of food and the right kind of food for me to survive on. Uh, water, which is even more ex important than than food. I I have uh, big tanks, but uh, not big enough to last for a year. So I was collecting rainwater uh, most of the time. And that worked well too. It rained sometimes, and I had a good system to to uh, to collect this rainwater. Ah, uh, there was a long passage, a long time. There were different uh, problems uh, along the way. Of course, I had uh, things breaking down, sails ripping, wind vanes uh, crashing down, uh, and so it was a lot of uh, w repair work to be done. And so, but I am pretty well equipped with with tools, and I have even a welding uh, machine on board, and so I was able to to repair most things. And um, but the actual biggest problem I had was uh, when I when I hurt myself, I 
I fell, I fell really bad and I ripped the muscle in my, my right thigh. Uh, so I got an inner bleeding and, uh, and that took a while to, to recover from. Uh, but, uh, but eventually I recovered from that too and kept going. Uh, you don't really have a choice when you're out there, you just have to keep going. When I came home after being at sea for almost eight months, single-handed, I said never again. <laughs> but and I'm, I'm not so sure. It's something very attractive about being alone out in in those waters. Uh, you kind of move in out there mentally, and you have to to be able to 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 stand it. But uh, I might do it again. Maybe not non-stop around, but I would like to sail in those waters again, in long long passages. But but maybe not non-stop around the world again but similar sailing I would like to do again yeah. I was writing this blog every day and which got followers and because it was um, produced every day it, it caught interest because people were starting to follow and you know they wanted to do to see how I was doing at sea and, and um, it got quite popular and and that helped a lot for me to to write down what was happening and, and other things from my life it, it made, made me think uh, things through better when I wrote it down so so that helped uh, a lot and, and and then I also had uh, contact I was able to to call home uh, once in a while uh, so so now loneliness was never really a big problem for me I, I, I don't suffer from that my my wife uh, helped me uh, a lot. She she was the one that that uh, posted the blogs and and uh, helped with all kinds of different things to make everything work at home when I was away. Um, so, but I didn't have you know a big short team or anything like that. I don't have any sponsors. I I I, uh, I did this uh, uh, all by myself more or less uh, from building the boat to sailing it. It was. It's not a big project. It's a little home project. <laughs> uh, well, my my wife, uh, my ex-wife now. She 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 um, she she knew who she was marrying already from the beginning because I'm I always been a seaman. So so and she knew about this uh, longing to do this trip. So she was prepared for it. Uh, but of course, it was hard for her and and our daughter too. And for my parents and for everybody involved, because it it is um, it is uh, some risks involved and and uh, things can happen. So of course it was uh, very generous of us. I've been doing similar things many many times, and, and we were living in Brazil during uh, ten years, and then I was sailing back and forth with with uh, stuff for the house. And, so, so they, they were used to me sailing, being at sea in different kinds of vessels. But uh, of course, this was very long and, and being alone, and so this was a little extra uh, hard for them, of course. I, I started working on, on ships 1976, and then, then I kept going. I've been on all kinds of, of, of different ships because I have never really wanted to stay in one place because I, I, I wanted to sail in between my own boats. So I've been, been um, in and out of many jobs and that uh, made it possible for me to work on many different ships. So I've been working on tugs, I've been helping to, to, to tow icebergs west of Greenland. The point of that is to, is to, stay, to keep the ice away from the drilling rigs west of Greenland. I was drilling for, for oil there, they were doing some test drills. And since there is big uh, bergs in the, in the vicinity, we, we our job was to keep these big ice bergs away from the drilling uh, position, and uh, you it's very difficult uh, object to tow because they are huge and they are very very heavy and it's only one tenth of it that's above the surface the rest is under so and 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 uh, how to go about to to. To do it is is um, it's quite simple actually. We we throw a lasso around the berg, and how we do that is that we we, we have this huge tug, almost 90 with 18,000 horsepower, and we tow a line that's almost one and a half kilometer with a buoy attached to the end of it. Then we go around the iceberg. We, we're towing this huge long line. So when we go around the berg, we pick up the buoy, and then we have a lasso around the berg. 
and then we connect a, a, a tow wire to this lasso and then we we put it out and then we start to pull so the berg is very very far astern from from the from the from the tug and then we start to to tow the, the berg and sometimes um, because we're pulling all the way at top of the berg it capsizes and and, and uh, then we have a little bit of a problem <laughs> to catch it yeah but uh, that's how we do it basically and i've been taking wow. passengers to, to antarctica and bananas to japan and all kinds of uh, uh, different vessels and, and I've been doing also sailing expeditions through uh, the Northeast Passage for example from, from uh, north of Siberia out of Bering Strait and I've been working in Antarctica with sailing expeditions as well so it's, it's, it's many many years and all kinds of, of different uh, vessels and uh, sailing boats and, and so on of a successful passage is, is um, to be in a good mood <laughs> like what you're doing and be prepared with with uh, with uh, with a good boat and um, be prepared uh, with the uh, with the uh, knowledge so you know what you're doing uh, with food with everything preparedness be 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 ready for what what might uh, come your way and and uh, like what you're doing and, and don't worry too much everything will work out for you <laughs> eventually I don't really right now have any projects going, but I would like to go down to, to Antarctica and those waters again eventually. Uh, and and uh, keep sailing. Uh, I might work a little in, in different kinds of vessels um, uh, for another few years, but, but I will mostly be sailing uh, in different uh, to different places yeah, that I actually it's the blog that that uh, become uh, a, a book uh, that covers all those days at sea and if someone wants to buy it where can they find it uh, they, they can find it in, uh, What's in the title uh, of the book or the, the the problem with the book it's in Swedish <laughs> but, but if you speak that language and understand it, you can buy it in Sweden from from uh, the, from a different website. They, they can. I, I have uh, I have a Facebook blog called Sailing Malala, and uh, uh, when I'm at sea, usually I post everything, uh, thing every day there. But, uh, otherwise, maybe once a week, uh, a few times a week, depending. Yes, we're in the living area and, and right behind me here is a little wooden stove. My old sextant is there and there's everywhere you see is a storage for food because I had uh, had to have a lot of food uh, on this long passage. This, this kitchen area here is also designed to be, be uh, working well uh, in all kinds of weather. You know, boat is small to have a workshop but for this uh, trip that the boat is um, design and built for. It was very very valuable to have this uh, workshop uh, because here I have tools and vice and, and stuff needed to to repair things. This is a cockpit it's quite small uh, which is uh, sometimes a disadvantage but for this trip it was mostly an advantage because it was only me on board so there was not a need to, for a lot of space and also if we have a big breaker that comes in and this inside here is, is used to be a part of the cockpit but I built this uh, little wheelhouse here to be able to sit inside when the weather is really bad and my sea bunk is, is in, uh, in here down there I sleep at sea.